today we've been invited to PSG Lille VIP tickets from so rare, but it's all about one man, Lionel Messi, one of my favorite ever players. I've never got the chance to see him. I'm absolutely buzzing, so let's get into it. As you arrive into the VIP section at PSG, you are greeted with a champagne reception. But before we get into that, and before I explain how I met Mbappe, I'm going to show you the highlights of the Paris trip, because this was more than just a football trip for me. If you do just want to see the football side of it, I'll timestamp exactly where that starts. I had six days in Paris then, and first up was the Basilica. This was all organized by my girlfriend, so massive shout out to her. Essentially, the Basilica is just a massive church. It lets you overlook the whole of Paris. It's a lovely view. It's going to take you a few thousand steps to get up there, but the top view is so worth it at the end of the day. There's loads of padlocks from a couple that have been there over the years. I think it's just a little cute area, to be honest. If you're going with your girlfriend, I definitely advise it. Um, as well, we have to take a quick look inside the church. It, it's really astonishing to me how these buildings are made. After that, then we hit the streets of Paris and it is just fantastic. There's so many beautiful cafes to try. I even tried a little bit of the local cuisine, obviously a nice crepe for me. We ended up down at the famous Moulin Rouge. You might have heard of it, but unfortunately didn't get to see a show, just too busy on the day. In the evening then, we went to this famous steakhouse. Uh, it's essentially viral on TikTok. So we expected to wait like 30 minutes to an hour. We get out the tube station then and lo and behold, there's literally no queue at all. I'm gonna assume it's because we went early evening, whereas most of the Europeans eat late evening. There's no choice on this menu. It's just their steak with unlimited fries and a signature sauce, but it comes at a really good value. So make sure you check that out. As we come outside after finishing the meal, you can see how popular this restaurant is. There is actually a, a queue forming now. Into the depths of the evening then, and Rosie took me to a secret cocktail bar, shot by day, bar by night, looking like a fancy cocktail location. This is gonna add up if you stay there for too many cocktails. That's what we did, but we don't regret it at all. The next day then, an early start. We've gotta get down to the Louvre, the world's most popular museum. Now this isn't a very me adventure. I'd much rather be watching some football, but in relationships, you've gotta give a little sometimes. Rosie is a massive art geek, so she could honestly have been there all day. The reality for me is I was actually more concerned of trying to get a deal done with Pavel Trader, trying to sort out my so red teams before the deadline hit. And yeah, spoiler alert, he didn't even respond. So yeah, not a good day for me. Then you come to the only part of the museum with the queue, and I'm sure you can all guess why, the Mona Lisa painting, of course, the world's most popular painting, I'd say. Smaller than you'd expect, to be honest. We got to the front pretty much, you know, in about five minutes. It's not that long of a queue, to be honest, but a crystal clear video for all you art geeks out there. I really don't understand why it's so important or why it's so expensive. So if anyone does know, you can let me know, but yeah. Not a clue here. If you do care for my art opinions, then the other rooms of note are the Egyptian section, just because they're really cool. And there's this like room full of gold jewelry. And just like, look at the ceilings here. They're really just like incredible, to be honest. There's no other way to describe it. I thought I'd pop in this little diagram thing here because honestly, the sheer size of the place just shocked me. I didn't actually realize how big this was. It's more than just like a museum. Another little surprise here, the little pyramid that you see on top, world famous. It actually goes below it as well. I'd never seen that, I thought it was cool. Coming outside, I just wanted to show you in person how big this thing actually is and the video doesn't do it justice at all. Into the evening then, a bit of so rare fun. We actually finished eighth place in the Champions League Special Weekly. It was just absolutely ridiculous for me and I thought it'd be a fun game if you could try and guess the rewards with me. Uh, not a good in innings for me, but see if you can do better. Do you, <laughs> Rosie, know the player? Yes. yes. That's good stuff. Are they from a European country? Yes. Okay. Are they English? No. Do they play in the Premier League? No. Do they play in the French League? No. So what players do you know that don't play in England? Don't play in the French League? How do you know this player? Do they play for Barcelona or Real Madrid? No. It's not good, is it? Do they play in Italy? No. Do they play in Spain? No. There's got to be only one left. That's just it. <laughs> Italy, Spain, England. This is gonna, my first answer to my first question, that yes, I know the player, is, is going to throw you off. Oh, it's a surprise that you Does it play in Germany? Yes. Guys, okay. Is it Bayern Munich or a RB Leipzig? I don't think so. Does he have a yellow kit? No. This is not good. Okay, are they over 23? In their age, it should say. Not, not over. Not over. So they're 23. In Cuckoo? 
No. I don't know how you would know this player, which exactly. is the worst this part. This is what's throwing me off. And you will know why when you know. I know, I know. Are they a forward? Yes. 23-year-old forward. Is it Randall Kolo Muale? It is indeed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Would you like to see I think it? that's good, yeah. I think that's good. <laughs> Muale, we're happy with that. <laughs> So yeah, Randall Kohler Muani, pretty happy with that. Managed selling for about £140, so some nice spending money from So Rare. If I will say, if you do want to play So Rare, my link will be in the description. If you do sign up, it helps you make better videos like this. And on top of that, because I feel like this video is a little bit of imposter syndrome for someone like me, for anyone that comments on the video, I'll enter you in a £20 giveaway. So thanks so much for all the support that helps me do stuff like this. It means the world, honestly. Now, you may not know this, but part of the PSG Lille game we were also invited, or should I say scouted, by the Paris Surre Club to play for the UK team in a five-a-side football competition. And I was just buzzing for this. I'd been out of football for a little while, so to get back into it, I was, I was just buzzing. You might see some clips here in the background just to get started, but introducing the team in goal, we had FIFA Flair, or as I call him, the Great Wall. Plastician and myself in defence, we found ourselves lacking a bit of match fitness. 20 years away from five-a-side football if you combine them. Both a big lover of beers as well. Doesn't really help your fitness at the end of the day. Thankfully, rolling subs allowed us to be at near full fitness for most of the time. Josh Forth then, or as I'll call him, the monk, because literally nothing phases this man. Cool, calm, composed, and he'll just complete any pass there is. It's that simple. It's Haber then, aka Twinkle Toes. For a big lad, he's ridiculously nimble, and those dribbles usually finish with some absolute rifles of a shot. Then the UK's own golden boy, Harry Trades. He was in the absolute heart of everything. You can see in the post-game photo that really he left nothing on the pitch. He is red as a tomato. Into the five-a-side football then. I'll put the highlights on behind us. The pitch records some of the goals, so don't blame me if the quality's bad. First up, we played the Surrey Data lads. We went 1-0 down early before I subbed on to change the game. And by change the game, I mean pass the ball to Harry because the lad scored five goals in this game. It was ridiculous. It was hard to keep my discipline knowing that I hadn't been given a Surrey Data ambassadorship yet. But we've got to do what we can do. We can beat them on the pitch. And that's what we did. The UK lads showed up. A 10-7 win. Good effort from the Surrey Data lads. But we do march on to the next round. The so Rare team is up next, and this was a nail biter. You might see clips of Dan from So Rare turning the team silly, but that's because, to be honest, he threatened to spend my account if I left them out. Dan, if you're seeing this, I've through two hours of footage for you. Please be nice, and uh, oh yeah, hold this L, because the UK boys came through with a 6-5 victory. Get in there. The final match was an absolute clash of the Titans moment. The Paris So Rare club had also won all of their games. A national fight for victory. Will the French pull out a 2018 World Cup storming victory, or will some GOAT heroics save the day and make the heroes the real heroes of this story? It's not a good start for the UK boys. We lose two goals very early. It was sloppy of us. The fatigue is really starting to show, but it's not over there. We claw our way back into the game before I regret to inform you that we were defeated by the Paris Surrey Club. They came out victorious. It was a 7-13 mauling in the end. By the end of it, I think we're all just a bit fed up, a little bit tired. Tired. Fatigue really did get the better of us. Questions were left unanswered though as we did have a seventh man who didn't show up on the day because he had food poisoning that morning. Answers we'll never know unless we see a rematch, maybe on UK soil this time. But for a group of lads who had never played football together, to throw down the gauntlet on away soil to a group of lads who play together every week, we could walk away with our heads held high. For anyone that is a numbers geek like me, you can see the goals and assists records here on screen. Everyone played their part, and you might realise why I called Harry the Wonder Boy. 11 goals. It was ridiculous. As I said in the beginning then, as you walk into the PSG VIP area, you're greeted with a champagne reception and a store to buy some merch from. I got myself a messy top, but, you know, for 108 euros it might seem pricey, but wait until you see it. It is ridiculously sexy for a football kit. Walking into the lounge then, you have a DJ, unlimited free alcohol, food, not much more you can ask for really. Really slick area. There's a nice little balcony area you can watch the normies walk into the stadium, but they haven't got the VIP tickets, have they? For me, it's a quick beer, chill out, calm down a little bit before the game. 
My heart was racing. I obviously wanted to see the GOAT play. I also wanted Mbappe and Neymar to start. Took a quick look outside, see the padded seat, see if I recognise any famous faces. Let me know if you can recognise anyone. I managed to watch a few players come out and warm up, which was nice. You can pretty much go where you want at this time. Shout out to Donnarumma. I've owned him on Surrey for over a year now. We've had some massive highs and lows together. Then the big guns come out. Mbappe, Neymar, Messi, they're all there. The front free start. The pre-game nerves are gone and I'm so ready for kickoff. <laughs> As you can hear, the ultras were in good voice. They actually occupy like one entire stand, which I think is just fascinating. Finally then, kick off and I am electric. I finally get to see the greatest player of all time, Lionel Messi, play football. I mean, honestly, I've waited for this moment for so long. I really am a Messi fanboy. And what a start. It only takes PSG 11 minutes before scoring. I'm sure you can guess who scored by this. <laughs> Then five minutes later, Neymar gets on the score sheet. Nothing too special about the goal, but we've already seen two of the front three knock one in. Just need the magic man to show up. Seven minutes later, we have more drama. But it's not the one we're looking for. Diakite with a really clean header, three goals in 24 minutes. The fans are getting good value for money here. Plus, a major benefit of the VIP section, there's these little TV screens, great for catching replays. Then, just a couple of minutes after that, even more drama, a stone wall penalty, and it's not given. Well, that's what it looked like to me, but the replay actually shows Nuno Mendes got the ball, but he did unfortunately injure himself in that tackle and had to go off. But this is just a crazy game. That's about it for the first half then. Back to the lounge for drinks and food. It's not long before more drama unfolds. Six minutes into the second half and Neymar comes off injured. Haber, a Neymar rare owner, really isn't going to be pleased with that one as you can see. The sub start warming up means we get a chance to see Warren Zaya Emery. You know, he's only 16 and it's essentially just another wonder kid ticked off the list that I kind of want to watch play football. Lille had a penalty denied in the first half, but not in the second. The screen's coming really helpful here. Really soft penalty for me here. A small tug of the shirt from Verratti. I mean, he really should know better, but is that a penalty? You let me know in the comments. Easily dispatched by Jonathan David. The rest of the game was end to end then. Lil really put PSG under serious pressure and honestly were probably the better side. Really disappointing to not see Messi at his best. He really hadn't done anything of note. Then Lil launch a massive over the top through ball into Bamba and he just rockets one past Donnarumma. Really tidy finish, but not what we wanted to see. That's a negative decisive for my so rare team. PSG losing 20 minutes to go and nothing really being created from them. Really, I'm pretty defeated at this point. The first half hype had completely gone and the pain was starting to set in. In the 80th minute though, everything changed. Rosie looked at me and said, I've been recording most of this game and I've still not caught a PSG goal. And I thought to myself, maybe we are the bad luck. So the camera went off and what happened next is nothing short of magical. Ball, cut back, Mbappe, goal. He does what he does best. It's the 95th minute, Messi turns, he's brought down, edge of the box, free kick seconds left everyone rises to their feet cameras out except for one man sometimes in life it's better to savor the memory rather than share it you all know what happens next there's only two options for me do you break down and cry because your dream has finally been realized or do you scream like a psycho let's see what happens <laughs> I mean, ecstatic is an understatement. Honestly, I felt on top of the world. A 4-3 win, all three of the front three scoring, a last minute winner from the Magic Man. Wow, what a game. Rosie even won a signed Newcastle shirt from Surrey for a little mini game we were playing, but she donated it to two incredible lads from the Paris Surrey club who actually gave up their ticket so she could go. They said they wanted us to have the best possible trip in Paris. And honestly, thank you so much, lads. You really made this whole trip. And as the title gives away, my luck did not finish there. 
Everyone went back up to the lounge to get as many drinks as we could before they kicked us out. As we were leaving, all the guys left to meet me downstairs. On my way out, I had too many drinks and I couldn't find the down escalator. We are only one full up and I thought, whatever, I'll just use a lift instead. And who's waiting to get in? None other than Kylian Mbappe. I obviously try and get in the lift as well, but security's having absolutely none of it. I was literally in touching distance of probably the most expensive footballer on planet Earth right now. So yeah, what more can I say? That's my Paris football vlog. I mean, memories that will last a lifetime. I want to thank absolutely everyone that I met that weekend. Thanks to So Rare for the experience and thanks for you guys that watch all the way through. I wouldn't be here without you. One last thing for me, if you could make it even better just by liking this video, subscribing to the channel and having a guess of where you think I want to go to next for the next football vlog. All the best to you. Cheers. Bye.